we have a crisis in the world, tremendous crisis, and also crisis in our consciousness, in us. I see the urgency of change, radical revolution, mutation in the mind. I see it. It is necessary. There is complete quietness of the mind, and that which is silent has vast space. Only then that which is nameless comes into being. This is Urgency of Change, the Krishnamurti podcast. If I allow time to be free from greed, I am still greedy. But to understand greed, the cause of it is the ending of greed. Hello and welcome to episode 105 of Urgency of Change. Season 3 of the Krishnamurti podcast continues with the format of carefully chosen extracts from the archives of the Philosopher's Talks. Each weekly episode focuses on a theme explored by Krishnamurti and the aim is to represent his different approaches to these universal topics. This week's theme is Greed. Upcoming themes are suppression, hate, and experience. This is a podcast from Krishnamurti Foundation Trust. Please visit our website at kfoundation.org, where you can find a growing collection of in-depth articles on Krishnamurti's teachings, along with key topics and a wide selection of quotes. The online store stocks all available Krishnamurti books and ships worldwide. You can also find our daily quotes and videos on Instagram and Facebook at Krishnamurti Foundation Trust. If you enjoy this podcast, please leave a review on iTunes or Apple Podcasts, which helps its visibility. This week's episode on greed has six sections. The first extract is from the first question and answer meeting in Bombay, 1985, titled We are educated to have more, more, more. Society says this is good. The commandments say don't do this, don't do this, don't do this, don't do this. And religions all over the world lay down a moral way of living. Don't kill, don't steal, don't do this, don't do that. All religions have done. And we do quite the opposite of all. Don't kill, we kill. Right? Don't cheat, we cheat. Don't have double standards. And so on. We all do the opposite. So why do we bother about commandments? Whether they are divine or not divine, whether they are straight from the horse's mouth, you know that phrase? All right, I won't use that phrase. <laughs> Straight from some saint or some god, some. Why do we accept these commandments? It seems so absurd. Which means trying to live something which is not natural. So, why don't we change what is natural? Not follow the commandments. I am greedy. All right, I am greedy. And I am also envious and all the rest of it. I am envious, which is part of greed. I like to be envious. What is wrong with it? But the commandment says don't be envious. Don't look at the man's wife and so on and the rest of it. Why am I greedy? That's my problem, not somebody else's problem. So why am I greedy? Because my whole education is to have more, 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 more money, more this, more that. Right? Isn't that so? The more, the better, which means comparison, which means measurement. Right? right? Measurement. 
I compare myself with you, you are bright, intelligent, beautiful, etc., I am not. So in comparison with you, I become dull. If I don't compare with you, am I dull? I am what I am. I can move from there. But if I'm always comparing myself with you, I become exhausted, fighting you, jealous of you. Right? So I won't compare at all. Have you ever done it? Never compare yourself with anything. You know, if you have been to museums, on one side they Michelangelo, on the other side some other, and so on. Can you look at that picture without comparing it with another picture? Can you see that picture, an old ancient picture, looking at it without any side distraction, which is comparison? <laughs> Just look at it. Can you look at your wife? And yourself without comparing? Have you ever tried, done this? To live a life without, um, without any comparison? That's real freedom, beginning of freedom, when there is no measurement of your becoming something. The second extract is from Krishnamurti's third talk in Madras, 1982, titled Trying to Become Non-Greedy is Still Greed. So you have to understand how extraordinarily time a factor in our life. So there is outward time and inwardly we have created time, that is, I hope to be something tomorrow. I hope to reach the height of spiritual nonsense. I hope to see you tomorrow. Hope. You understand? The word hope implies time. I am this, but give me time to change, to be different. I am greedy, but I need time to be free from greed. So there is this idea of inward time, a psychological time. This is clear, isn't it? Now, is that a fact? Is that so, or merely an invention to escape from actually facing what is? You are following all this, right? I am greedy, suppose I am greedy, and I like to be greedy, but also there is in me which has been conditioned for centuries, don't be greedy. It's not right to be greedy. If you want to be a spiritual human being, you must not be greedy. I've been conditioned to that, but yet I'm greedy. So I say to myself, I will eventually be free of greed. Give me time, either this life, or in a future life, which again something we invented, we must go into that, we will later on. I am greedy and I must have time to be free from greed. 
This is what we are conditioned through millennia. All the scriptures, everything tells you, you must gradually be free of it. Right? That is, if I allow time to be free from greed, I am pursuing greed. You know, the obvious. But to understand the greed, what is the cause of that greed, is the ending of that greed. But if I have time to say, eventually I will be free from greed, that's, an, that's a continuation of greed. I hope this is clear. So there is only the ending of greed, not greed trying to become something else. Greed trying to become non-greed is still greed. I wonder if you follow all this. So, thought has invented this idea of time, psychologically, spiritually, inwardly. And thought itself is time, right? Because it's born out of the accumulation of many, many millennia of knowledge from which it acts. Which is time. So, can the mind, can your brain understand the nature of psychological time that there is actually no future? I am greed. Not greed is separate from me, but I am greed. And to discover the cause of that greed, to understand the causation of that, and to look at it very carefully, is the ending of that greed. Not in terms of time, but actually, immediately, instantly in greed. If you are concerned with that, we can go into it. That is, the cause of greed, greed envy, is desire, right? I desire a new car. I've got an old car and I've got a new car. Or I see you driving in a marvelous Mercedes or a new imported car <laughs> and I want to have the same thing. Greed, we all know that word, what it means, the feeling of it, the desire to possess something that I haven't got. To understand that, one must inquire very carefully into what is desire, because desire is part of fear part of time, part of a contradiction and therefore disorder. They are all interrelated, they are not something separate. They will all have a cause and the causes are all interrelated. So in, un in understanding what is fear, why human beings have lived for timeless ages with fear, we must go into the whole structure and the nature and the continuity of fear. That requires your attention. 
your care, your awareness, not say, please tell me how to be free from fear. That's too childish. But if you understand the whole nature of it, how it comes into being, what is the structure of it, what is its movement, then you will see for yourself, if you have given your attention, your care, your observation, then you will be totally, completely be free of fear. Don't say, will I be always be free of fear? That's another form of greed. All that you are concerned is with the ending of fear. If another fear arises, find out why it arises, go into it, because that requires constant alertness, observation, awareness. But if you say, I'll end, please tell me how to end fear altogether at once, it is possible, but that requires an extraordinary skill of thought, skill of observation. It, that requires an insight into the whole nature of fear, to end it completely, so that you have no fear of anything at any time. That insight into the nature of fear is not bought from a book. It cannot be taught to you, which is memorize and apply. But if you learn about it, it's yours, you have it then, you have it in your hand, in your pocket, then you can act. The third extract is from the fourth discussion in Sanin, 1976, titled Observing the Whole Movement of Greed. Can I observe the total movement of, of greed, total movement, the hidden as well as the conscious greed? What is movement? You understand? I said, total movement of greed. Greed is a movement. It isn't static. It is constantly moving, more, 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 more. So, can I observe the movement? Now, what do we mean by movement? Movement means from here to there. Hmm? So, movement means time. Right? Time is movement, whether chronologically or psychologically, it means movement. So, as long as I have this idea of movement, which is time, time is going to prevent me from observing the whole. You, you, cap, you get some, some of it, if it is not clear we will go into it. I am not asking myself how I might stop time, I am just observing the whole factor, the whole map of greed. And one of the points which prevents me from seeing the whole map of greed is this movement. Movement to end it, the movement to pursue it, the movement which says, I must stop. I am observing all that. This observation 
of movement, I am not denying it, I am not trying to stop it, I, there is only an observation of this movement. So, as desire, as greed is also a movement, right? So it's part of time. I haven't got it, but I will get it. Right? So I have to find out if my mind is caught in this movement. I wonder if you are understanding all this. No, sir, don't agree, it's very... go slowly. We said consciousness contains both the conscious as well as the unconscious. And part of that consciousness is greed, or take any other thing. And so I ask, can, can we see the totality of greed, the total movement, the nature of it, the structure of it, how it arises? To see it clearly, not theoretically, but actually, right? Can you see it? The origin of it and the end of it. Is there an end to greed? You follow? I am not greedy for wealth or money, position, status, and all the house, but I am terribly greedy to have truth. <laughs> You follow? <laughs> to, to find truth. And that to me is the most important thing, and I'm terribly greedy, which is part of greed. I know you don't like to think that, but it's still greed. So, can I see the whole of it, this movement? I can only see, please, this is simple, I can only see the total movement of greed when there is no direction to get rid of it, to stop it, to suppress it. All that prevents me from looking at greed totally. Right? Because as we said the other day, Direction is fragmentary, which is a motive. Motive is fragmentary. The motive gives a direction and therefore it's fragmentary. When we have a directive that I must get rid of it, hmm, greed, then I have moved along a, dire a certain direction. Therefore, direction prevents me from seeing the whole. You understand this? That is, to suppress desire, greed, to rationalize greed, to uh, escape from greed, or to say, I must stop greed. Any activity which is directive prevents the seeing of the whole. Right? So as long as I, as a human being, as I, as a human being who have, who wants to see the totality of consciousness with its hidden layers, must understand, have an insight to the fact that wherever there is a directive, it is, that directive is divisive, therefore fragmentary, which will prevent the perception of the whole. Greed is part of consciousness, as violence, as hope, despair, anxiety, all that is part of our consciousness. Your consciousness is the world consciousness and so on. Part of that consciousness is greed. 
can you see the movement of greed totally? Not only the hidden, but the obvious greed. We are saying you can only see the totality of the movement of greed only when there is no direction, which means only when there is no motive. Because motive gives direction. Right? That's simple. So, if, uh, if there is the demand that it's only by seeing the totality of consciousness, then also the unconscious is revealed, then you have to, to observe without any direction. And as that demands a certain attention, seriousness, because then you end greed, you follow? (laughs) Then you don't play with greed. So you are then aware of the totality of it. But most people don't want to give up their greed. They like their greed. It's a tremendous pleasure to possess. The fourth extract is from Krishnamurti's second talk in Bombay, 1981, titled How Do I Observe Greed? I am greedy, acquisitive, ambitious, competitive. And Being greedy, my cultural response, please please listen to the words, my cultural response is not to be greedy, because the books have said it and the Gurus, if they are at all intelligent, have said it. So, my response is to be not to be greedy, to strive after not being greedy. I am and I must not. The must not involves time, and the factor between what what is, which is greed, and what should be, is a time interval. In that time interval great many other factors come in. Therefore the mind is never free from greed, whereas Please listen, whereas direct perception of the fact of greed, not the cause of it, not the explanation or the justification or the denial of it, just to observe without any movement of thought is freedom from greed. Are we meeting each other? Are we? Oh Lord! Look, sir, let's take a much more perhaps greater importance, which is we live with formulas, don't you? Concepts, principles, beliefs, ideals, 
you demand a purpose, a goal, something you want to attain, reach. Don't you? Observe it in yourself, not somebody else's observation. Actually observe it in yourself. You have beliefs, haven't you? Goals, purposes, conclusions. Now, that is, you are in a confused world, living a confused life, living a contradictory life, and you say there must be clarity, there must be enlightenment, there must be hope. Right? So you, there is a time interval between what you are and what you are trying to achieve, right? Now, between what you are and the principles, the conclusions, the concepts that you have is a time interval, isn't it? You will one day become that. In that time interval, other factors, other influences, other incidents happen. Therefore you never can achieve that. And therefore there is no freedom in the future. Right? Are you understanding this? Therefore, when you deny or when you see the truth that conclusions, formulas, beliefs, ideals are the factors of time and therefore they are binding and not, they do not bring freedom, then you completely wipe all that away. then you have only what is left, which is your greed. Now, to look at it completely, totally, is to never suppress it, never to give explanations, never to justify it, but just to observe, as you listen to those crows, you can't do anything about it. In the same way, to listen, to observe completely the fact that you are, that there is greed, and remain with it. which means that the observer is the observed. The observer is greed and not separate from the thing he calls greed. And to see that totally in that perception that is total freedom, you understood any of this? Are you, as you are listening, learning and doing, they're all the same, listening, doing, now, not when you go home. You understand? 
I am listening to you and you say to me, I am burdened with formulas, concepts. All my life is based on a future ideal. Which is a fact. I learn that, I see that. And I see <clears throat> the implications of that statement, the meaning of it, that is time-binding, that brings conflict between what is and what should be. I see that the ideal can never be achieved And I see the whole structure and the nature of conflict. When I have an ideal, seeing the truth of that, I abandon it completely. I don't have any concept. Please do listen to this. This is most really important. No concept, no formulas, no ideals, no principles. Therefore, I am lit. There is only greed. And how do I observe that greed? Do I observe it as an outsider looking in, or do I observe it without the observer? The observer is the past. The observer is the accumulated knowledge which says you must not be greedy, or justifies greed. So can, can, I, can this mind observe without the observer? When it so observes, perceives, there is a total comprehension and freedom. The fifth extract is from the fourth talk at Brockwood Park in 1971, titled Awareness of Greed Without the Observer. I want to watch myself, I want to know myself as deeply as possible. And I watch myself. And what is the observer who is watching? What's the nature of that observer, the structure of that observer? That observer is the past, isn't it? The past knowledge, what he has remembered, collected, stored up, the past being the culture, the conditioning, that is the observer, who says, this is right, this is wrong, this must be, this must not be, this is good, I'll keep on this bad, I mustn't have. So the observer is the past. And with those, with those eyes of the past, we see, we try to see what we are. Then we say, I don't like this, I am ugly, uh, or oh, this I will keep, this should not, you follow? All those discriminations, condemnations take place. Now can I look at myself without the eyes of the past? Can I watch myself in action? 
which is in relationship without any movement of the power. Have you ever tried this? No, I'm afraid you haven't. Then is there an observer? Then there is only the observed. Not there is no observer. Please just see this. I'm envious or I overeat. I'm greedy. And the normal reaction is I must not overeat. I must not be greedy. I must suppress, you know, all the rest of it that follows. So, they, in that, there is the observer trying to control his greed, his envy, and all the rest of it. Now, when there is an awareness of greed, of your overeating, or whatever it is, without the observer, what takes place? Are we following each other? Are we doing with each other this thing? Oh Lord, no? Yeah. I overeat my greed. I'm very greedy. Can I observe that greed without giving it a name? as greed, because the moment I name it, I've already fixed it in my memory as greed, which says I must get over, I must control. So can I, is there an observation of greed without the word? without justifying it, without condemning it, which means, can I observe this thing called greed without any reaction whatsoever? To so observe is a form of discipline, isn't it? Not imposed by any particular pattern, and therefore conformity, suppression, and all the rest of it. But to observe anything, observe my mo- the movements of m- that are in myself, greed, envy, overeating, angry, jealous, anxiety, smoking, drink, you follow the whole series of actions without Condemning, justifying, or naming, just to observe. Then you will see, if you so observe, the mind is no longer wasting energy. It is then aware, and therefore it has energy to deal with that which it is observing. The final extract in this episode is from Krishnamurti's first talk at Stanford, 1969, titled When the mind is not greedy, nothing can make it greedy. The office demands that I be ambitious, greedy, and I may not want that. 
right? And then you say, what am I to do? Can I go to the office without being ambitious? What will you do, sir? Can I go belong to a structure that demands that I be afraid, aggressive, acquisitive? And if I don't, which is, if I am not, I refuse, I am not greedy. Completely, I mean it. Not greedy, not just verbally, but actually. Nothing is going to make me greedy. Because that's, I've, I've seen the truth and the falseness of greed. When I am, see that clearly, can't I go to the office and not be destroyed? It's only when I'm partially greedy <laughs> I'm caught. That's why one has to be complete, that is, completely attentive, so that in that attention there is goodness, which is not comparative, which is not measurable. And I'm, when the mind is not greedy, no structure is going to make it greedy. 